Pledge of Allegiance. This is Curtis Stevens idea, he's done it before. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I'm assuming, do we have yes? Is this working? So, isn't this just a wonderful afternoon? No. So, uh, greetings to everyone. Uh, things are going to be in a different order than we usually do things. One, that are some people that are in the process of giving blood. Some of us who are just recovering from having given it. And but most importantly, we have a very special guest today, Jennifer Atkins, and she was our uh, Gold Grant Scholarship honoree, and she just recently she come on up here. David's been telling me you have to speak right at a certain time or you're going to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyway, Genevieve was our global scholar, and uh, she's just back from Ireland. How long have you been back? Oh, barely a month, about three weeks. Yeah. And uh, so she's going to share a little bit about her experiences, and then we have a graduation present for her. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Okay, so hopefully I have everyone can hear me. I'm sorry my voice is so scratchy. I'm currently recovering from a cold. It's very sad. <laughs> so it's wonderful to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Good reminder. <laughs> it doesn't seem very long ago that I was here and preparing to leave the Dublin. So this past year has been absolutely incredible. It has flown by. It doesn't seem like it's been a full year. It seems like it could be maybe a lot better. Fellows and their accomplishments over the past year. 
Um, and so I, it was just so inspiring to kind of start a my trip to hear from those fellows about everything that they had learned over the course of the year and particularly their field experiences. So all of them had studied and conducted research somewhere else other than Bradford. So somewhere in Mexico, in Greece, Lebanon, Ethiopia, Northern Ireland, and those were just a few of those elements that I can remember. But it was just incredible to see all they had done just in one year, um, kind of and to hear them talk about where they come from and where they were going. So that was amazing. So, and that just made me even more excited about my time in Dublin to kind of have that at the beginning and realize, oh, maybe that would be me in one year to have all of these experiences and lessons that I've learned. So while back in Dublin, while on Island, I studied at the University College Dublin as a master's student in the Quality Studies program. It's kind of, everyone always asks me, what is the Quality Studies? What does that mean? What are you going to do in that? And it is kind of a weird title, but it's mainly human rights focused, um, but it particularly focuses on um, inequality, uh, economics, and then policy, which are kind of the three main focuses. Um, and so it was a really small program. It was only about 18 students. Um, and I really liked that because you're going to get lost in the program. Um, it was in the, there were great class discussions every single day, and it really allowed us all to be good friends and to meet up outside of class even. So I liked that. The, the course was separated into three semesters. The first semester um, really kind of laid the groundwork. We focused on theories of inequality and then kind of just general introductions to human rights issues. Um, so that was great. All of us came from such a wide variety of backgrounds. I think I was the only one that had a background in political science. Um, and but then most people came from biology or psychology. I think there were a few social work. And so it was just great to have all of those different backgrounds kind of come together and focus on these uh, topics. So then that was the first semester. The second semester really took the theoretical frameworks and backgrounds that we had learned about and applied them to real world issues. So we had classes on economics, so we really focused on housing and education. Uh, we, I took another one that was on gender and conflict and kind of the conflict resolution and how gender plays a part in that. Um, and then we had a human rights law where we can hear different human rights laws, um, how they're implemented, and kind of where we are and how we should move forward. Um, and then the final semester um, took place entirely over the summer, and that was your thesis. Um, and so we took everything that we had learned and kind of tried to apply to our own research, um, which was really exciting. I liked that. Um, so my thesis explored how changing social and political movements in Europe over the past 30 years uh, impacted the incorporation of women's rights on, um, into European law, and then also kind of whether those laws have actually been implemented in countries. So for that, I did two case studies of Croatia and Czech Republic. So that was very interesting to kind of shift and take some of the broader concepts that I had learned on some that really interesting. So I love that. And then in addition to my studies, um, I volunteered as a reading tutor at a local primary school during the spring, working with uh, like 10 to 12 year olds on their reading skills. Nice. And then uh, during the summer, I worked as a teacher in a preschool for kids with autism. And I love these experiences. I never expected to kind of take part in them. I thought I was going to be studying, traveling, meeting with rotary people. And then while I was there, I realized I really want to do something else. I want to get involved with the community more. And so I found the tutoring position first, and then kind of by accident fell into the job during the summer. And I loved it for one because it kind of gave me insight into the community where I was living, much more so than if I had just stayed in the university and just focused on my studies. But then also, it, um, in getting to know the people in the community, I also really got to know the issues within the community. So Dublin's in a housing crisis right now. And so I heard a lot about that. And then just working at the school for people with autism, hearing about the struggles that those families face and finding a place for their children and, and just everything that goes along with that. So it's been really interesting kind of being out in the community and having discussed a lot of the same issues in the classes and then hearing people that are directly affected by them talk and speak to that. So that was amazing. And now we're back. Uh, the thesis ended uh, in September 1st. Uh, so now I'm back here. I'm looking at it. I'm sort of thinking I got sent just down the road, which is great. I'm in the early childhood intervention program for the time being. 
um, and he's currently studying for the LSATs. Uh, so hopefully we'll take those in the spring and see where that takes me. But thank you all so much. I know that I could not have any of that, had any of those opportunities without your support. And it's just been absolutely incredible. So big round of thanks to you all. <laughs> Well, Jennifer, there's two things. The first thing is that you need to join Rotary. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you can even give David credit for recruiting you because one of our goals is, now, is Nicole here. So how many do we have under 40? Eight. Eight. And her goal is to have at least 13. I think you can help her reach her goal. <laughs> and then, um, as a graduate of the Global Scholarship Program, we have a t-shirt for you. I wasn't sure what size. So you have, you have a choice. And the one you don't take, you can give to that guy over there. Thank you so much.
more than one way. <laughs> so several members have requested a follow-up for the weather is a bit summer. So I have asked Allison to make sure that we have that again. So she's right over there and you can hit her up. <laughs> also, uh, Jacob Amigo, who is a relatively new member of our club, has been selected to speak at Wake Up with Walsh Bird on November 7th at the uh, Bradbury Thompson Alumni Center. And he will be talking about economic development and even uh, in Indian country. So I think if you just go on the uh, Washburn University website, if you would want to attend and speak to that. And I've also asked uh, Marie to arrange to have him speak at our club regarding uh, Indian development, Native American Indian development. And then next week, we will be celebrating World Polio Day. And we will be meeting at Cabaret Foundation. And uh, Roger Eshelman has just done a phenomenal job of planning for that meeting. And we, is it a $5,000 goal we have of contributing to uh, the polio contributions through four rotary? And so come with your bill holds open. And I, the last time I looked, we had $375. Has that increased? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, leading up to that meeting, Case TV will be airing two polio stories. The first one is on October 21st. It will be at the 5 o'clock news. And uh, Baron Barr, who is uh, uh, will be the district head district for next year will be speaking along with Roger Ashelman. And then there will be a second story on Good afternoon, guests, staff, and students. Just a reminder that we are having a blood drive in room 106. You are welcome to attend if you are 17 years of age or older. And um, if you are a student and would like to donate, bring your student ID that Thank you. Do you, somebody need to get up to go donate blood? Uh, the second story will be on KSN TV at 5 p.m. on the 23rd, and it will include Michael and his presentation on uh, polio and his experience with it, and then there will be a non rotarian also telling his story. So I encourage you to listen to those. And a big special thank you to both Roger uh, Ashman and to Robert Graff for helping us make that happen.
but he is also the executive director for the TBC Learning Center, and I'll give it to him to uh, headline the show and all close by what we're doing at CPAC as part of a five-prong approach for educational programs. So, ladies and gentlemen, David George. Great to see faces instead of just the camera. It's always a treat to talk to people in person. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, again, I, I do two things. I'm a 37 year broadcasting urologist and I've worked in seven states. And it's great to be in Kansas. This is a fine blend of where I've been and where I grew up. I grew up in Fort Worth and uh, I've been in Wisconsin and Minnesota and Alaska for about 24 years total. And so it's great to kind of nudge back. Uh, to where I belong. And so it's uh, good to be here. And I love Topeka so much more than I even thought I would. It's a terrific town. There's a lot of nuggets that all the people that pass by on the interstate across the country need to know about. So I appreciate all the work that you guys do. You're the movers and shakers, the community leaders. And uh, so it's great to have you here and to chat with you for a moment. And it's great to be here representing uh, Topeka Daycare, which is now TC Learning Centers and has been called that for about the last 14 years when curriculum became a bigger part of what we do in child care. And so my background was with the Autism Society first, and then it was with multiple sclerosis in Anchorage, Alaska. And so I was trying to get some nonprofit work here and weather work at the same time. And the nonprofit work happened first, which brought me here. And then about four months later, KSNT said, well, you had applied less than months ago, and we've got an opening now, do you want to do that? And I said, as long as it doesn't interfere with what my main purpose is now. And so we worked that out. So I do one thing from 1.30 to 8, and I do the other from 8.30 to 4.30. And it's uh, worked for two years now. So, uh, and when everybody says have a good weekend and things like that, I say three bedtimes to Monday. That's what I'm all about, three bedtimes to Monday. I just got to get to Friday afternoon. So this is really nice, too, because Larry and I met about two years ago, just as I started, and it was at a function where there's collaboration going on and networking and this, that kind of thing, and I said, we, we've got to try to do something. We have small kids. You've got something that fascinates kids. You've got a lot of programs already in place, and it, it just didn't get much movement, but now it has, and so we've written grants to support this collaboration that we're doing. And it's, it's going to be nice because I think we finally have enough support to start this in January. And we want to do it as a, a six-part series for preschoolers and pre-K where they get an introduction to art. The first visit, almost a field trip type fashion, would be to see seats and stage and backstage. And then it starts to break down into more specific things about lighting and sound and makeup and body positions and voice projection. And, how it all comes together so when they see something they realize there's a lot more to it than that and there's a lot of science built into this and a lot of other things that fit into our curriculum that we're trying to do so i'm very excited about this uh it looks like thanks to you that we're going to have support to kick this off in january so we're putting pieces together through these uh, final months of this year to do that and i want to thank you for that opportunity and we'll see how it goes and build on it and expand on it but uh, Topeka Daycare and TPAC will watch this first and we'll see how far out the community is starting to go after that. So thank you for your time today. So we're making the name of this program Playhouse Theater. And uh, when we started it, we were talking about something for tots from one to five years old. Uh, it's preschoolers. Uh, and it's never been something that we've done here at TPAC, uh, we never want to do anything that doesn't step on uh, a proven and well-run well program uh, at TCT, at Topeka Civic Theater. They've got such great programs uh, that what we're trying to do at TPAC are give augmented or celebrated uh, snippets of those programs. Uh, when I mentioned the five-prong approach for educational programming, Many of you may have remembered uh, Irv and Beth Scheffel. Well, they endowed uh, the Scheffel Theater Clinic, which is still running 24 years later. Uh, and through the years of not-for-profit giving and ebbs and flows and, and wonderful times and not-so-great financial times, that program has never stopped. 
We made sure that even if we can't focus on the 3,000 children we'd like to have at the 30 classes of 100 each, uh, we've at least made a few hundred happen every year. We also have the second largest or second longest running program, which is the School Time Theater Series. And that's where we have two anchor programs, uh, the Kansas Ballet's Nutcracker uh, in December, as well as the Spring Ballet by Ballet West as the, uh, the two programs we make sure that those children see. But we've also tried to, with funding, make sure that in February of Black History Month, we've done things such as the Rosa Parks story, the Jackie Robinson story, and things that, again, uh, celebrate you know, our heritage and what we're, we're trying to do. Uh, we've got the Freedom Fighters on tap for next season, should we be able to raise that money. Uh, the third approach was, uh, was actually an endowment that started and continues to make with Hills Pet Nutrition, and that's our Young Artist Awards. And that is where we celebrate juniors in high school who excel in the various different arts, whether it's performing uh, or uh, dancing, it could be sculpting, could be comedy, could be theater, whatever that be. And we endow them with scholarships so that when they graduate from high school, whether they go on to a vocational school, uh, a place of higher education, New York for, for acting training, or whatever be the case, that that money becomes seed money for them. And then the, uh, the fifth one is one that we're kicking off. It actually starts next Friday. It's a master class series. And it's, uh, it's started where we're going to have it in acting. Uh, we're going to have one in voice. We're going to have another one in auditioning, in the art of auditioning. And then, I don't know how this began, but there was the art of comedy. And that's going to be our first master class next Friday. Uh, I've got three comedians coming in from Chicago, veterans that are all friends with Bill Engwall and Jerry Seinfeld, the no-names who didn't get the sitcom and are now sufficiently wealthy to never work again. Uh, but these guys are school teachers, uh, they are uh, they're engineers, they work at trucking companies, but they still are comedians, and they're teaching a class next week. And I'm very happy to say, that KSNT has become a presenting sponsor of both the master class as well as the Chicago Comedy All Stars public show, which will be Saturday, October 26th. And um, so much so that not only did they sponsor it, but they registered, well, they didn't register, but Brooke Lennington, the evening anchor, she is going to take that class. So I'm sure there's going to be a documentary or something that says, you know, if there's an art to being funny and there's a way for a stand up to stand out. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to that. The acting uh, master class, which will be in February, you may know this gentleman, his name is Jeff Crady. Uh, he's a, uh, a Washburn World grad, uh, and now is the standby lead in the award, uh, the Tony Award winning musical Tootsie. And uh, if you've not seen the costume that he puts on, he is both Dorothy Michaels and Michael Dorsey. And he can tap in those sequins, let me tell you. Uh, we, we then will have a master class in vocal coaching, and that will be uh, led by Kyla Jade, who is a Shawnee Heights grad and was the third place finisher. She got robbed on NBC's The Voice two years ago. And then uh, we'll be doing an auditioning class that will be run by Michael Brennan, who's also a Topeka native and uh, is a collaborator with Franco Dragon and all the Cirque du Soleil shows. And he is a musical genius. And he'll be getting these, uh, these young, young artists how to audition and what those directors, producers, uh, and casting people are looking for. And that's all part of this developing process that we have for educational programs. Really, really excited that we're able to kick this off with, um, with Playhouse Theater and with TDC Learning Centers. We're going to go many different places, and uh, we hope that we know, we're known for all the great shows that we have, but the money that we raise is, a, is for the not for profit that makes sure that we proliferate educational programming. And because I have the stage, please join us tomorrow for Great Escape. It's our annual fundraiser for TPAC Youth Programming. If you haven't gotten your tickets, we only have nine dinner tickets left and 20 tasting tickets. Uh, but there's food, wine, beer, bourbon, Hazel Hill chocolate. 
Maker's Mark infused dark chocolate from Tanzania auctions, uh, and a magic show that's going to be happening. So join us tomorrow if you haven't already. Thank you for your time, and Dave and I are here for any questions you may have.